Good morning and welcome to The Art of Composition. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. I was on Thomas Kegler's website last night and I was looking at some of his still lifes. I've primarily focused in on his landscapes up until this point, but I came across his painting and I loved it. I would love to get a print of this actually and frame it. But before I analyze this, I want to mention a concept. It's called notional space. And notional space is the space around a particular element in a composition, subject, etc. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I take a square or rectangle around this element right here, okay, this would be notional space around this element here. You could extend it to here to get the whole uh, the, the vase or whatever this really is, but you also have notional space around these flowers right here. And let me extend that out a little bit. And the reason I'm mentioning this today is because when the artist is designing using a grid, as all artists do, well, trained ones anyway, they use notional space to lock their subjects on a grid in a particular space using harmonic divisions. And I'll show you what I mean by that when I analyze this painting. So let me get started. All right, but before I drop the grid, I want to point out one thing. To me, this is a dominant horizontal line here. You could say you have these horizontal lines right here, but to me, they're not dominant because they don't stand out as much as this one, even though they're longer. But you have all this darker area in here, which enhances this horizontal line. So. All right, let me bring this back up and I'll lay the armature on top of it and show you how he's getting a, I'll show you how he's locking this element into place. One other thing though, I want to point out here too, is that notice the diagonal lines that are coming about in here and you have a vertical here and you can frame this in right here. But these diagonal lines come from the armature. And what Thomas Kegler is doing, he's not drawing what he sees. He's not he's not drawing and painting a photograph to make it he, he's not painting to make it look like a photograph. And the way the artist can do this is they formalize lines. In other words, they're using straight lines to land things on a grid as well. In a photograph, you wouldn't see these straight lines, but when you're drawing and painting, it's known as formalizing and you can create straight lines so they're stronger. And they give the painting much more visual power. If you look at some of the drawings by John Singer Sargent, you'll notice he's using a lot of straight lines and his drawings don't look like photographs. They're much, they have more power than a photograph ever could. So. All right, let me get this grid going here. So what I want to do, though, is I'm going to show you how he's locking this planter. I guess it's a, it looks like a tea kettle almost. But he's locking that in place using the grid. But he's also using the harmonic armature diagonal lines to enhance these diagonal lines there, as I had pointed out. And... When I'm analyzing art, I try to find a significant division when I first lay down the armature. And then it helps me build upon that. It's sort of a, Juliet Aristides calls it being a detective. And for me, it's sort of a way to begin analyzing a composition because you have to analyze artwork if you want to understand this information. There's no way around it. You know, photographers aren't willing to do this for the most part, but the artist should if you really want to learn this. And even Myron Barnstone says that in his DVDs. And he's 100% correct about it. You have to understand how to do this because your visual literacy skills will improve drastically. Still waiting for my Thomas Kegler DVD. I haven't gotten it yet. I, w I wanted to 
He has two DVDs. He has one on Niagara Falls, and it's like eight hours long. But before I bought that one, I wanted to check out his other one on plein air painting. I think it's 60 minutes. All right, so I have the grid drawn out. And what I look for is a, a dominant horizontal or dominant vertical line to get me started in analyzing this process. And remember when I said, for me, this was a dominant horizontal line. Well, I can drive a horizontal line right here where these series of diagonal lines intersect and it gives me that division here and I'm going to bring this all the way over. So I that that helps me start the comp the composition analyzing the composition but if I drive a vertical right here where these diagonal lines intersect I can then drop the other horizontal line here where this diagonal meets that vertical and it gives me the bottom of that shelf right there and this is how I get the process going but also notice here with the vertical running down the center of the rectangle it locks this element into place but as I had mentioned before you have this diagonal line in here right with the flowers let me show you where he's getting that if I drop a vertical here where these diagonal lines intersect right here I can then drop a diagonal line from this corner down to this corner right here and it gives me that diagonal line. And when I drop that diagonal line, I now have that horizontal right at the top of the flower element right here. And I can bring this over because I have this diagonal line meeting that diagonal line. I can drop that horizontal line like that. And from that horizontal, I can then drop the vertical right here. So now I have locked this element into place with a few lines. I also have a horizontal line right here, right? I'd mentioned this one. And that can be derived from this series of intersecting diagonal lines right there. That gives me that horizontal line. But you also have another one right here. When I drop this diagonal line to get this angle into flowers, it gave me a new division. And that is right here where these diagonal lines intersect. So that gives me that division. You can see how this can come together in a design. And with this horizontal and this diagonal line, I can then drop a vertical right here. And it gives me the edge of the flowers. From that point, I can drive a horizontal line right here gives me the top of the flower. So you can see I'm locking elements in a place. I won't break this down any further because I don't want to confuse the viewer, but you can see how a design can come together with various lines using the harmonic armature. You're always starting with the one grid and you can build it however you want. This is how design works and I hope this is interesting enough to motivate the artist out there to learn more. One other thing now I just want to point out before I end this, I have a horizontal line here where this series of diagonal lines intersects. There's a lot going on here, but it's a fantastic painting. And this is what makes a design work. This is what makes a work of art. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it as always.